Hey, what's up everybody? How's it going? Today is January 16th, 2023. And, um, yeah, I had a couple of good ideas today, but I decided to go with something else and I'll break it down. I was going to do one on um, graffiti rats. Like I was going to explain the story of a graffiti rat from the neighborhood that wasn't a graffiti writer and what happened to him and a graffiti writer that was a rat and how the whole thing played out. I thought that was cool. I was also going to do one, I was thinking about doing one about crews that I thought sound cool and crews that I thought sound stupid, like graffiti crews. But anyway, I had a couple of good ideas going down. The, also, Gary Sash, 357, a lot of you guys have been asking me about him. And I've spoken about him several times. I've done a lot of graffiti with him on the trains back in the days. But anyway, I chose this episode just from thinking about what I heard last night. I was mentioned in um, the Graffiti Champs, the podcast, on uh, Instagram, SR1. I support that channel. I, uh, I listen to it. I often tell people on my channel here to check it out when it comes up on YouTube and it's on Instagram. It's called Gra Graph Champs. So I'm watching it and this guy's Skay. I used to write a lot of graffiti with him from 1999 into 2000. Uh, yeah, a lot. I mean, yeah, we went on two good runs. But um, the weirdest thing is, they asked him how we met. And he came up with some weird story that made me sound like some kind of brute or like a bully or something like that. And I, I just, I couldn't understand it for the life of me. Why? I mean, it bothered me. I was even asking my son, like, why would someone do that? Like, he said that we had met in a bar and it's something about he knew the girl that I was with and uh, I didn't like him talking to her or some crazy shit like that so I asked him to step outside but that's not what happened at all I mean first off I'm built exactly how I am today pretty much same weight a little over 6'4 about anywhere from 220 to 205 very seldom will I bounce into 198 197 it's happened in the summer but yeah, that's my normal weight for the past God the fuck knows how long. Probably since I've been about 22, 23 years old, that's now nah, maybe 25, 26 years old. I've been that weight straight on for my whole life. A little younger, I would go down to maybe lower 190s at the most. But when I first met Ske, he was a little over five feet tall. And a little over 100 pounds. Like, I'm dead serious. He was like 115, 120 pounds or something. He was built like a woman, like a skinny little girl. It would, like, how would I look coming up to him in a bar, like, showing such an insecurity towards the girl that I'm with at that time or whatever? And I would, oh, yeah, we're going to step outside. Like, to a child, man. Like, literally, he was a child. I was pushing into 40 when I met him. He was barely even legally allowed to drink when I met that man. The girl I was dating was young. Anyway, what, the way I really met that man was quite simple. There was a girl I knew that lived in Woodside, Queens, and uh, we were seeing each other. I wouldn't go as far as to call it anything other than that. Now, on Fridays, we would go into the city to go clubbing. Like I said, this girl was 23-something. I was 37, 38 years old, maybe, and she was like 22, 23 years old. Very pretty girl. Now, she was from Woodside, Queens, born and raised, and grew up there and had a whole group of friends. So they would all pile into a van that this guy, Chris Riggs, would drive into the city and we'd go clubbing. We'd go to the limelight or whatever. I personally didn't dance, but that's what, she's a young girl, and that's what they were into, whatever. I'd go. So we'd all pile into this van on a Friday night and drive into the city. Like the limelight, um... All different places. Uh, you could think of the bank. I remember at one point, it's like an old bank that they turned into like a blood bank, like a goth type thing off of uh, Houston or something like that. Yeah, I, a lot of different places we'd go to. So one day, we're getting in this van, and the girl that I was seeing at the time, she said, oh, um, a friend, uh, there's going to be an extra person, a friend. He writes graffiti, you know, this and that. Oh, cool, well, you know. What's he write? Like, I guess it's not like Ghost or EA or anything, because EA, R-I-S, the dude that died, had actually sold this girl and some of them dudes marijuana at certain points in their life. He was all of their marijuana dealer. 
So, no, no, it's this guy, Skay. Yeah, whatever. Never heard of the guy. I didn't tell her that, but I said, yeah, sure. Oh, I meet Skay. He hops in the van, or we hop in the van, and he's already in the van. However the fuck it happened. I shook his hand, hung out. Pretty much the night when they're dancing and talking and doing whatever the people do. There's um, like Chris's girlfriend and uh, sister and the girl I was with and this one. Now, you know, they're all doing their thing. I was pretty much sitting there talking to Frank, is her name, Skay, about the feeding. And uh, we exchanged phone numbers and we've kept in contact. And the next weekend came around and boom, we started writing graffiti. It really was that simple. I never ever ever hired my voice to him. I never ever threatened to hurt him or take him outside or anything like that. That never ever ever happened. And it's a little offensive to think like, you know, God forbid. This is the actual reason I do this podcast. Like enough people do shit like that. Like, you know, people think like I'm a brute or like a bully or something like that. Like, I don't know why he would like make it like I was taking him outside to fight like that. that like they are, that shit puzzled me. I'm like, what the fuck? Like why? Like, you know, and it was, even if you don't remember, then you don't remember, but you don't, like, fabricate a whole other story and shit like that. Make me look like I'm some kind of um, uh, insecure person or something around the woman. That, that's very disrespectful to me, I see. And as the interview goes on, he said, uh, this guy, SR, talks about um, when he started doing shit with RDs. Oh, yeah, well, you see, RD used to um, just do little tags all over the place. Other than, of course, he was doing his train thing, he says. So that's something I'm paraphrasing or whatever. And, that, that you know, he told me, oh, yeah, we got to go big. We got to do big, huge stuff. Now, I'm just going to stop right there because him telling me to go big, just remember now, I met this man in 1999. At the end of this video, just look at the dates on some of these things that I'm posting. I've, before I ever even met Skay, I, I've wrote graffiti for like 20 years before I ever even met this guy, Skay. 17, 18 years, 20 years, roughly around that point, 17. I mean, I'm sitting in front of the camera turning it on. I wasn't even planning on doing this episode today. But yeah, 17, 18 years I've been writing graffiti before I ever even met this man. Now, after the trains had died, 89, 88, that's all I was doing. I was doing big, huge shit. That's all I've ever been known for. I've done stuff with Baron. Baron is hung out with me, and we've done so much big, huge block buses and big fucking roller paint things all over the place. I'm going to show you pictures. Probably still until today, I no, because of MQ, he came in, I got crossed out by Chino and then when I did that big, big, huge blockbuster on the river, that thing was the biggest fucking graffiti done illegally on Manhattan Island for like 20, 30 fucking years. I mean, I did it. I did it three times, actually. I did it. It got crossed out by Chino, J.A., and all them. And then I did it again, and pretty much the same thing happened. I, I waited a year or two, and I did it again. Same people crossed it out again. Then MQ went and did it, and then I went and did it bigger. So, yeah. I, but throughout that whole time, mine was about 17 feet off the ground. The rat's ear, I forget, 20-something feet off the ground. It was big, and it was one city block long, huge blockbuster. I did that before I ever even knew Skay existed. Hell, the first time I did that thing, I did that before most of the people he even mentioned to, as idols that he looked up to. Before those people even wrote graffiti, I had already done that thing. Huge. <laughs> and it's gotten scribbled out. Yeah, true story. Before some of the people he's even mentioned as uh, big influences on him. So that, you know, it's got me puzzled, but... Yeah, you could just look at the pictures of that. That's just one incident. That's not even mentioned. All the shit I've done with Baron and the big huge thing on that fucking uh, sawmill uh, grain place out in Brooklyn I've done with. I mean, I've been known to do big huge shit. Like, uh, hell, I'll show you pictures of Chino, uh, uh, TK, everyone crossing me out and shit. Yeah, that's what I was known for. So I don't know how he could tell me to do something big when I've been doing something big before he was even writing. Probably even born. Like, yo, the dude probably literally wasn't even speaking at that point. Like, he was probably not even in the fifth fucking grade, yo. <laughs> True fucking story. Probably wasn't even in the fifth fucking grade, man. <laughs> yeah. He was probably like, gag, gag, goo, goo. Fucking smell of diapers wasn't even off his ass. Funniest shit ever, man. But, yo, I, you know, I really don't want to rant too much about it. Because in deciding all this and looking through these pictures, 
about things I've done before I even met this guy, I stumbled upon the top, the rooftop of Chippendales. Now the club, the male strip joint known as Chippendales is what this is going to be about, whatever remaining time is left of it. Let me turn this off and turn it back on so I know you don't miss any. I don't want to go over the 20 minute mark. One second. <laughs> So yeah, there was a strip club called Chippendales. And it's funny too, because I just got done watching the documentary about the Chippendales murders. Not the Netflix thing about, um, it's about Chippendales, but I didn't get to check that out. I don't have it. I, I don't have a way of watching it, I guess would be the term. But uh, yeah, the documentary about the Chippendales murders, man. Yeah, that, that shit was wild, man. But anyway, I used to break into Chippendales, and I had the rooftop. I'll show you the pictures. I actually did an RD burner on the rooftop of Chippendales in 1990. But even before that, in like 88, 89, I did a big silver and black blockbuster on that rooftop. But when I was doing the piece, the door opened up, and there's nowhere to really hide on that rooftop. It's a one story. I'll show you the picture. And it's like just one like air vent, like one of the big chunks of metal that like does ventilation or air conditioning or something. I'm hiding behind that fucking thing and the door opens. This guy comes up with the girl and they're smoking marijuana. I can smell marijuana, but I'm literally like just ducking down behind this thing. Like I'm not hidden, like ducked in no little cubby hole or nothing. There was nowhere to hide. It's literally like a fucking golf course. It's a big fucking rooftop. You know, it's like a movie theater or something flat, you know, <laughs> like a club, like a discotheque. It was a discotheque. So anyway, yeah, before that was Mirage, Mirage, or whatever the fuck they called it. But anyway, yeah, so I'm hiding there, right? So I smell marijuana, I hear her giggling and shit. All of a sudden, I look, she's sucking the guy's dick, right? So I got to wait for that to happen. You know, I'm like, shit, you know, I'm halfway done with my shit. Then they stop. And four more people come up with a bottle of fucking champagne and glasses. Eh, la, 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 and they're all hugging each other. I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Yeah, I swear, they were up there for like an hour and a fucking half. I was like falling asleep up there. They left. I finished my shit and I got the fuck out of there. And the way I would get in there, I'd climb up a little drain pipe. And then I'd hop onto this fire escape and I'd be right up on there. It's like a gutter drain that would go down the side of the building. But then, now I remember doing that and that was the piece. And if you think back now, when I think back before that, there's the silver and black one. And I'm looking right under it, and there's a door there. That door is the back exit to Chippendale. I'll tell you, I could literally sit here and talk to you guys almost for like a whole year just about me bugging out and having fun with Chippendales. You know, for real, it's crazy. I could sit here for like a whole fucking year just talking about picking up girls at Chippendales. Wild shit. And I really could do that. I could sit, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, man, we all, like, we'd all go from the park and shit, we'd go home, we'd fix ourselves up, like, with Chippendales and letting out, we'd all be used to hanging out, hey, ladies, yo, we used to, yo, I swear to God, man, hell, half the time, I was even underage, man, yeah, these women pick us up, bring us to their houses and shit, blast, man, good fucking times, man, but anyway, <clears throat> y'all ever heard of Fabio, Fabio, F-A-B-I-O, well, if this door, I'm going to try and blow up the door, possibly make it, my son will make it so it'll be behind me in this video and I'll be able to point at it. If not, I'll just blow up the door and point at the door. It's like two big doors like this to the side exit of Chippendales going down 61st Street. I lived on 62nd Street at that point in my life. I was a child. I wasn't even full grown yet. I was a teenager. Yeah. So anyway, I'm breaking into a car right in front of that door. I'm breaking into the car. I forget what I'm stealing out of it. I'm either breaking into it to steal the car radio, or maybe there's a nice leather coat or something in there. There's something in that car that I want. So I'm popping the window, breaking the window, and stealing something out of that car. Normally, the car radios, you get $7,500 for like that for them. And around Chippendale's time, we were always scheming, always breaking into cars. And hell, we would start taking these girls home and then rob their fucking houses when they were fucking sleeping. Yeah, take their wedding rings, everything, all their money and everything. And, you know, the older women, most of them are married and shit like that. Hell, we were, we were like teenagers, you know, for real. Like, uh, women would pick us up, take us home. And I remember, man, go fucking almost all the way out, like near Shea Stadium and shit. And the lady was sound asleep. And I took every fucking thing and looked worth a fucking penny. 
that I could grab, man. All the jewelry from the jewelry box, everything. I got on the fucking seven train, went all the way home. Yeah, true story. We used to do shit like that a lot. <clears throat> anyway, getting back to Chippendales. So that door, I'm breaking into a car. And my dog, I'm with Shannon, my dog. She's part German Shepherd, or she was. She's been dead many years now. I'm a teenager at this point. She was part German Shepherd, part Doberman. I found her in a parking lot up on 103rd Street uh, in Harlem, up off of uh, Washington Houses there, TWB Boys. And I brought her home. I found her when I was with John John and kept her ever since. But I've trained the dog a lot in this and that. So I'm breaking into the car. You can't really hear nothing when you're inside the window of the car. It's broken. You just got your feet hanging out. So I do hear my dog go, and it runs over to the guy. The door, when the doors are open right there next to me. A big dude, like a bodybuilder, Fabio. You got to look him up. It was Fabio, the man Fabio. He was just starting to become famous in Chippendales. He maybe heard the glass break. I don't remember an alarm going off from the car or nothing. Heard the glass break, or maybe it just happened to be he was walking out that door. But for whatever reason, Fabio came out that fucking door. My dog jumped up on him and started growling and barking and shit like that. I come out the window. I look at him. He takes his leather trench coat off. He has a huge leather trench coat on. He takes it off, starts wrapping it around his arm like he's going to fight my dog or something like that. True fucking story. So then he goes to kick my dog. And when he goes to kick my dog, he falls on his fucking ass. So as he falls on my ass, the dog's like, rrr, 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 with the leather coat. And the dog stops it. He goes to kick my dog. My dog starts biting him on the leg. I pick up the leather coat. I run down the block. I'm like, come on, girl. I call my dog girl. Her real name is Shannon. Shannon out of Ding Dong. Come on, girl. Let's go. Come on, girly. I go, run, 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 run. Down the block, up, cut through the garage where my boy Led Zepp used to live, Chris Olsen. Cut up through that garage, go back up the next block, and I go home. Got this big, huge leather coat. Well, I'm trying this fucking thing on. It's huge, because Fabio was big. I was not even full-grown at that point. I was a teenager. If I would have held it on, it probably would have fit me good now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was this big, huge leather coat. It was huge. It was funny, I looked like a hanger, like, because, like, the sleeves would come down to here on me, and the shoulders would come out to here. But, yo, I was rocking that shit, right? <clears throat> so, it's like, that night, I go out, and I got the coat on, and I bump into a friend of mine. Now, this is funny, because, yo, he actually watches me here on this podcast. Uh, actually, a lot of my friends from back in the days, like, kids I grew up with that don't necessarily... I mean, this guy, he wrote graffiti. I don't want to blow his name up, because... Yeah, he went through it, and, you know, God bless him, man. He's like my age, man, and, uh, you know, I love him. He's like one of my first friends ever. But he's on here. If he feels like commenting, he could comment in. But anyway, I give him this leather coat. He's like, yo, and he's huge, man. He's, he's the same dude that when I was talking about Brea, the guy that pulled out the gun, you know, um, when Bray was hiding behind the thing and they were ready to shoot his ass. I was like, yo, dude, chill. It ain't like that. Yeah. Anyway, same guy. He's like, yo, I bump into him out there. It's like 64th, 65th, 2nd Avenue, right near the movie theater. I remember like it was yesterday. So, you know, I see him, right? He's big like that coat would fit him like a glove. So he's like, yo, you know, I was like, yo, check it out. You know, this guy. He's like, yo, let me get that. I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, because like, yo, even Lace, who was pretty thick but shorter, he, like, yeah, I couldn't think of it. Like, I couldn't think of any way to sell it, this and that. I was like, yeah, sure. We always did that. We'd always steal shit and give it to each other, especially around Christmas time and stuff like that. But I was like, yeah, sure, you can have it, you know. So, like, the sun goes down and comes up. The next day in the newspaper, <laughs> you get caught with the same coat on, robbing fucking banks. I'm like, holy shit. They're like, armed robber, this and that, going out and this and that, and the banks and stuff. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And I know why he was like, yo, I need that coat. <laughs> yo, man, fuck yeah, man. That's some classic shit. Like, yo, I need that coat. Next day, yeah, he's in the newspaper. Like, Rah! like they got them all handcuffed and shit. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a good one, man. Yeah, God fucking play. I mean, you know, I felt like, wow, this, this, like I saw the picture. I never told them what I kept my mouth shut. But yeah, that was actually Fabio's leather coat. Yeah, that was Fabio's, the, the model. He's on all the women's true, the love story books with the hair. He's all blonde hair to here and it's cut. He's like, he's, sometimes he's on commercials and shit. Yeah, that was his fucking coat. Yeah. And I see my friend, and he, yeah, he, he's out now. He went to prison and stuff. He's out now. He's living his life. God bless, man. That's 
my fucking heart, man. All them dudes, man. All them little man. When we was young, man, I'm talking like 13 years old, man. Those were my peeps, man. But yeah, that was, that, another guy got in touch with me recently too, Miguel Mr. Yeah, he got in touch with me, Mr. Wonderful. So not like a lot of people from way back when I was young, man. They be watching me on this podcast, man. Uh, my channel. I don't know whether to call this thing a podcast or a channel or what, but yeah, a lot of people watch me on here, man. I, I'm really having a good time doing this stuff, man. Like I said, I feel a little funny sometimes when discussing certain things. Like, I don't know, like, I feel like I'm telling, but if it's something that happened to me and there's, like, no statute of limitations or something like that, I don't think this should be a problem. And, I mean, it's not like anyone would get in trouble for it. But, you know, like I was just discussing to, to, in my past podcast, this really is, like, the weirdest thing I've ever done. Like, like no one could ever say nothing bad about me. Like, as far as it goes with telling on anyone or anything like that, it's just, it's never, I never get caught. Yeah, seriously, I'll tell you, like getting back into Chippendales, man, I'll talk about this other incident. Frankie Gator and me, John John, Sammy, which is D3, John John was JJ, Frankie Gator, SQ, all these dudes old school, you know, we used to chill. And we used to break into Chippendales, like, on a fucking regular, like, yo, that's yours. We would get in through the, the, the skyline, the ceiling, we would drop it, and we would just jump down, and we'd have these four sofas. Like a VIP area where it's these big cushy sofas. And we literally just, woo, boom. <laughs> yeah, for real, we would jump from the ceiling and land on these big cushy, like, yeah, and we'd land on these big cushy, these fucking sofas. We'd run in there, we'd grab liquor. Once we found a bunch of cocaine, yeah, fucking yeah, it was like a quarter of a brick, man, like a chunk like that. Fucking cocaine we found upstairs in the office. I remember once we're fucking, I, this is the original story I wanted to tell you. It was me and Frankie Gator. We, we would even hit the floor seats. We'd never take everything. We always keep it. We'd leave a little money. Like, as crazy as that sounds, we'd leave something that would be somewhat rangeable. You know, we didn't want to burn the place. Plus, I had a graffiti on the roof and stuff like that. We would even go back and put the fucking glass back on the roof. After we go home and everything, we'd steal out of that fucking cases of liquor and everything. And we'd go back up the green, Jane, and put that piece of glass back over that thing. And we'd go back home. Yeah, that fucking serious, man. So much shit we take out of that fucking liquor, a mink coat. Yeah, I got a mink coat. I sold that shit for like six, seven thousand dollars, man. And that was like back in the late eighties. Yeah, six, seven grand, man. I know they probably sold that shit seventeen, twenty thousand, man. Yeah, fucking mink coat was in one of the offices. Anyway, we're up there. Me and Frankie Gator, we're up there, fucking around. All of a sudden, like the front doors, like we're on the stage area, actually. Behind, like he was stealing some fucking, uh, like, I don't know, some kind of weird electronical equipment. And all of a sudden, the front doors of the place just open. Like we actually see, like, the world, like, outside. It's kind of dark in there. And, like, you feel like, like, <laughs> I'm looking at him like, oh, shit. I see lights all blinking and blinking and blinking. I'm like, fuck, that's the cops. Yo, you know what fucking happens? A fucking ambulance comes in there, like uh, EMS drivers, and someone comes down the stairs while we're in the place robbing the joint. And we didn't know. I mean, when I could walk around and check the whole fucking place, it was like three hours after they closed. The sun was almost coming up. We didn't think anyone would still be there. So anyway, yeah, someone like fucking died or overdosed or something, but they come by, they come in. Well, once again, we're like hiding behind like these fucking sofas and like fucking pillows and shit like that, and hiding over near the stage and stuff. And, you know, we'll watch these fucking ambulance guys. They come out with a fucking gurney, like a stretcher. They go through the back. They go up the stairs. And then they come back down with, like, a woman in the fucking thing. And, like, I don't remember if, like, the sheet was over her head, like, she was dead. But I do believe they had, like, IV bags hooked up. And they wheeled her out. And they took her and put her in a fucking ambulance and took off. And, like, the lights were on and shit. We're like, fuck, this sucks, man. Like, you know, I don't know. I think one of the guys, it was probably one of the owners or something like that. Maybe they were partying with a girl and she overdosed or something. I don't know what the fuck it was. But, yeah, that was pretty weird, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember that shit. I mean, we still took a bunch of shit once we realized what happened. And we got the fuck out of there. And we would go through the ceiling, like I said, and jump onto the sofa. Like, poof. And you land on. It's a big cuff. It's like a fucking mattress under the fucking thing. And we'd land on that shit. And we'd... Go out that same door that's in the photograph that I'm going to show you under the, the blockbuster, the silver and black one. That same door that's right under that blockbuster, we would go right out that door. And we cut up and we go through the ramp, which is the 59th Street Bridge, Queensboro Bridge, to most people that don't know. And we swerve 62nd Street and we throw everything over the wall at a little clubhouse there. 
Yeah, and we'd hide everything there, and then we'd sell it. We'd sell the liquor to sometimes a Vegabondo, an Italian restaurant across the street. Uh, we'd sell a lot. We'd sell all the places. Uh, Flanagan's would buy it. Finnegan's Wake would buy it. Oh, yeah, we'd sell all the liquor real quick. Drugs. So we, like I said, we found drugs to make coat. Yeah, all types of crazy shit all the time. We were always robbing that place. I'll tell you, you know, the Italians, too, they figured that shit out. Like, it was an I Indian dude that was actually, like, the main dude. And, man, yeah, everyone was just, yo, know, that shit, that dude was just getting raped, you know, like, straight up, man, like, just robbed horribly, man, yeah, he land right in the fucking, like, right in the den of thieves, man, like, right that location, right there, it's like, fuck, <laughs> yeah, then he wasn't from New York or from America, like, the other guy, I, from what I've seen in the documentary, he was a little more slick, but, yeah, no, they didn't stand a chance around here, man, they, they were fucking, people wind up getting shot in the head and thrown in the fucking river, it was all over the news, and, he had people breaking into the place like me. And he had the mafia that was shaking him down, like Ernie Grillo and all that crazy shit. Yeah, crazy old Ernie Grillo, Sergio. Well, Sergio was dead at this point. But yeah, all them fucking guys. Vito, all that shit. All them Italians had John and Tony's Pizza. Yeah, man, they got their grasp on that shit. Because you also had that strip club up the block and shit. Yeah, they were fucking, they, they were just, yeah, that, that dude, He there was no way he was going to survive that shit, man. But yeah, I was watching that documentary, I was watching that shit. And then, you know, they're like the Italian dudes, and like, I swear, me and my brother, we actually stopped buying pizza from John and Tony's. Like, I was afraid they were going to start poisoning us or something. Like, they knew we were breaking into cars and shit, and they knew we were making, like, Chippendales a little more fucked up than it was. Like, for real. They knew we were breaking into the cars. But, and it wasn't even us. Like, it was actually, like, PK and fucking KK and Spick and fucking uh, Ross and Bice and Sear. It was all them dudes from Astoria that were doing it. And, you know, they were blaming us for it. But, of course, I just explained the story of me breaking into a car. So, duh. I was breaking into it, but uh, I wasn't the only one doing it. And then later on, when I teamed up with those guys, that was a wrap. And at that point, I was already teamed up with KK, Spick, uh, Rust, or Form. Yeah, Form, Tommy, Sasa. Yo, all them dudes, man. TPA, Mad Max, fucking Chrysler. Uh, yeah, all them fucking dudes, man. Even Lee Three was hopping around with those guys for a while. That dude wrote Lee Three, the Chinese guy, fat kid. Yeah, all them dudes, man. They were all tearing that shit up. But yeah, in that neighborhood, they were looking at that shit like it was me. But everyone was thieves around there. Like all the teenagers, like the kids that were before us that were almost not teenagers no more. Then you had us that weren't teenagers, and then you had the younger generation below us. It was like, yeah, no, that neighborhood was just all thieves, bro. Just straight up. I mean, I'm not even talking about graffiti shit. I'm just talking about just robbing shit, yo. Straight up robbing shit, man. Yeah, everyone was fucking... I remember the pool hall also on 86th Street, man. That shit was a trip, yo. Yeah, fucking when Ginky used to play pool there. Like, you know, they actually hired D3 to work that. <laughs> Forget about it. Yo, they hired him to work that. That was a wrap. Like, yo, we were fucking breaking into that place, stealing it. They shut down because of some violations, man. We were climbing around. We were hanging out in there, playing pool all night. Yeah, this is like before alarms. Yeah. I remember the alarms with, um, you would take that little bell, you know, ding, 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 and you just take like a sheet, like a bed sheet, and just start wrapping it around it, inside it, and it'll just make it so it don't hit, and don't make no noise, yeah, we used to do all crazy shit, yeah, yeah, I've seen people actually take that, that stuff, the, it fills up like styrofoam, they go and they squirt that shit in there. I never thought of that. We would just use a bed sheet or something long and big. You could just keep wrapping around it, almost like spooling like toilet paper off of a spool or something. With the theory, and the, the bell would hit the cloth instead of hitting the metal. But yeah, man, we were robbing every fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those are some funny stories, man. But yeah, I was doing that fucking rooftop, man. I did that thing that three or four times. That's chipping out. That's before I ever even knew a skate, man. Or Skay probably even, like, he was literally probably a child back then. So, yeah, that was weird for someone to say that. I don't, like, imagine if I didn't have my podcast, like I was saying, if I had killed over or something like that. You know, people could do that, and you, enough people hear shit like that, and they start thinking, wow. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, more times than none, I've been fighting with people, but I never, ever raised my hands to him or wanted to fight him or anything. How would I look? 
I'm like a fucking grown man. He was literally, he would look like a child. Like he had no facial hair. He was like a baby, yo. For real, when I first met him, we were writing graffiti. He was like 20, 21. He used to go, quick, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk over and I'm going to video where Chippendales used to be. That, that actually, the whole place has been gone and rebuilt and everything since then and then redone and it was a bed, bath and beyond for a while. I think right now it's even under construction, but I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to walk my dog and I'm going to go over there so you guys can see. I'll show you. Totally different. The whole, that whole landscape has changed. Like that whole block, like all those buildings are gone. The gas station, everything's gone, gone, gone. This is going way back, man. Chippendales, man, good times, man, I'll tell you, man. Yeah, we, I used to fix it. I remember I had uh, chocks once. I remember once with chocks, we were walking by, and the ladies, were, one of them was being a cock blocker. And I was like, ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> oh, shit, that was funny. I was, one was yelling, complaining. I said, ch -ch 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 -ch. And I reached over, I oh, go over by the ear and shit. I started kissing her. Oh, funny shit, man. They were like, yo, come on. Yeah, man, good times, man. I'll tell you, man, a lot of time, I was underage even, man. What, what are they going to say? You know, I mean, even if I was robbing them, you know. I was on the age. I was just a little kid, man. <laughs> yeah, man, that shit was crazy. I remember, like I was saying, Shea Stadium. Yeah. I had this lady all the way out on the seven line, man, from Chippendales, all the way out. Her husband was, I forget, somewhere else or something. I remember taking a shower and shit like that, coming back out. She was, you know, after doing sex. I took a shower, come out, she was already asleep, man. I just started rummaging through all this shit right in there, boom. <laughs> Look, yeah, I took all the diamonds, jewelry, gold, yeah, silverware. <laughs> shit, I took every, I was filling up her garbage bags, man. <laughs> like a garbage bag in the kitchen, I remember that shit. Took her silverware, she had silverware, silverware. Yeah, like a, a buttercup thing with the knife. Probably something that, the knife that you would use when you get married and you cut the cake. Yeah, it was from Tiffany's. It was in a, a velvet sleeve. I remember it like it was yesterday. Blue, with the gold writing, Tiffany's on it. Yeah, I remember that shit, man. I got good money for that. I got a couple hundred dollars for that shit. I right, y'all take And you got to remember, nowadays, that would be like, you know, money back then compared to now. You do the math, man. Shit. All right, y'all. Watch for this video of um, where Chippendales used to be. So you see that? That's the same as our corner <laughs> where Chippendales was. Look at they turn that shit into that. <laughs> that shit's crazy, right? Look at that. Fucking skyscraper. Yeah, that was Chippendales right there. And you go down a little. Are you keeping up with us? Hey, what's up, Kip? Oh, what do you mean? Yo, hey, Kip! Yeah, see, and the door would be right around here. And the door was built right about here. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole different building now. But yeah, right here's where the door would be. And I'd run down there, see where the trees are, cut through that way, go up that block to my house where I lived. Yeah, pretty cool shit, huh? Good night, people. Peace. You know, I was thinking of one other person that did some pretty cool big blockbuster. OJ, yeah, down there where they built the Trump Plaza later on, but he did that, uh, well, I don't know, he probably did that in the 90s, it was a huge, big OJ, I forgot all about that, big yellow, he did a big, huge yellow OJ facing the West Side Highway, yeah, pretty impressive, it was huge, it was huge, yeah, that's another person that did a big, big blockbuster, OJ, it was like a paint roller, done with yellow, I remember that, alright people,